in the current uh, political climate, it almost seems impossible that you could date someone of a different party. In fact, I've had people tell me that, colleagues, friends. But, you know, working with couples, I know it is possible to not only date someone of a different political party, but to be happily married to them. There are two key points that you need. And the first of those is, these are, these are keys that without them, the relationship probably wouldn't be harmonious. The first of these is that you can never use your partner's political um, party in an argument against them. That's the first rule, and it's hard because you're gonna have to bite your tongue a lot and you're gonna have to change your thoughts a lot. The second one is you just do not talk politics at home. If you can abide by those two rules, usually you can come together and quiet things down, especially in a very political season, such as now and just what it's been the last four years. The If you're dating someone, I'm gonna tell you some things that I think will help you maybe at least learn about another party and allow yourself to still admire and grow in a relationship with this other person. I think just wiping someone out or crossing them off your list because they belong to a different party says more about you than it does them. And it says more about your openness, about your willingness to learn. And you may say, well, no, it's my values, but really most people are so extreme right now because they're trying to convince everybody else why their candidate is best. And you don't move toward the middle that way. You move toward the extreme. And where most of us would be if we understood all the facts and we weren't only looking at our own selfish needs, we were being altruistic about how policies affect everyone in the country and in the world at large, I think the majority of us would be in the middle. But the middle is nowhere to be found. So I'm gonna help you create the middle in your relationship. And the first thing is be curious. Instead of going into any conversation, condemning or accusing your partner, be curious. Why do you think that way? If, you've, if you say you value this though, then how does this align? And I don't want you to be accusing them or putting them on the hot seat. I want you to really seek understanding in your curiosity because this is gonna help you grow too. When you understand what's underneath people's beliefs about a, a candidate or anybody as a leader, a world leader, it helps you get closer to them because once you understand how their mind works in support of their values, and this is, um, this is insinuating or assuming that you do agree with their values, then it will help open that up and help you look at it more clearly and objectively. Secondly, listen. And I don't mean just hear their words. I mean, really listen. What are they saying? A good listener feeds it back. So you're, let me get this right, you're saying that whatever they're talking about, whatever area, and it's probably going to be three key issues, the big hot points of each candidate. And as you listen, take out the part of it that you're trying, you're going to come back with. Don't think about your comeback. Think about what they're saying and listen to what they're saying and let it register with you. Let it grow, let it, let it process before you jump on it and tell them why they're wrong. Thirdly, monitor your reactions. Are you getting all hot-headed, fumed up, angry, enraged? What's that about? You don't even know these people. I mean, you don't know these candidates perfectly. You don't even know them. You just know what they are like on TV and what everybody's rhetoric is saying, we don't know them. They're not in our inner circle. So why are you allowing this to get under your skin? What are you afraid of losing? It always comes down to fear. What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of losing? Our democracy? What does democracy mean to you? Open it up. Be curious and listen. There's a reason you're reacting. And if you're reacting 
because it looks like someone else is winning. That says more about your ability to process and allow. It says more about your character. What's it going to be when there's a hot topic between your relationship that's really important? Are you going to fight the same way? You're going to get angry? You're going to walk out? You're going to leave them with the check to pay? These things are very important. Try to calm down inside. You need coping skills. Sometimes what we see in our own reactions, we're like, I did not handle that well. And I need to learn how to calm myself. I'm getting way, to, I'm put, putting way too much of my personal power and my integrity on the line by trying to win or be afraid of what they're saying. And lastly, show respect. Everything about you depends on your ability to be self-disciplined, self-controlled, and in charge of your emotions. And when you, when you violate that, you disrespect not only yourself, but you disrespect the person that you're sitting across the table from, your partner. And then they, they're, no, they're no longer even talking about politics. They're talking about you. And you've blown a chance or missed a chance to get to know another person. We don't all agree. Love isn't like that. We don't have to agree. It's better if we don't agree. What's important is we listen to each other and we respect each other and we stay open to learning from each other. Our job on earth is to connect, not only with others that we like, but others that we don't like. They're our teachers. Let's be taught, let's take a moment to just learn again. And yes, it is possible to love, be married, and be happy with someone who disagrees with you politically.